Guys, I wanna cry. I just recorded this entire video when I forgot to turn on the microphone. So I was basically going... Which really wasn't doing that much good. Oh, sheesh. Okay, let's start this one again. So, greetings everyone and welcome back to 365 Days of Prague. Today we're gonna be reviewing The Perfect Element Part 1 by Pain of Salvation. Hi, my name's Naomi. I'm an avid progressive rock fan, but I'm a long ways from knowing all the prog albums out there. But this year, I'm gonna give it a try. This is 365 Days of Prague. By the way, for anyone who's interested, because I didn't really write it anywhere in the script, this is the part one of the album, and while Pain of Salvation have never released an album called The Perfect Element Part 2, the album Scar Sick of theirs is actually supposed to be the second installment for this one, so that's just something that I'm throwing out there. Anyway, here are some of my favorite bits from this album. So let me start off this review by telling you all that I am sorry, I'm deeply sorry, I'm so sorry and I'm especially sorry for fans of Pain of Salvation and especially this album in particular. And the reason I'm sorry, well, is because I really didn't dig this album so much. You see, it has taken me four days since listening to this album for the first time until I actually got down to writing the script for it. Now usually when I hear an album that I'm really excited upon, it doesn't take me more than a day to actually go ahead and write a script for it, but this one I just really didn't look forward to it and thus it has taken me a long while and a lot of procrastination. And the reason for it honestly is that this album today, The Perfect Element Part 1 by Pain of Salvation, is one of those albums that if I could have done so, I would have chosen to skip entirely, not listen to it, not make a video about it, just move on to the next one, preferring not to even talk about it, but unfortunately I don't have this right of choosing, so I'll have to make do. But let's firstly start off with some backstory. So Pain of Salvation actually started off in 1984 in Sweden, when an 11 year old Daniel Gildendo formed a band called Reality, and he and his friends, of course he being the front man or front child adolescents back then, they would perform music together and they would enter a lot of musical competitions, of course trying to gain rewards, but more than that trying to gain recognition. And after seven years of sort of being active together, in math class in 1991, Gildan Lowe would suddenly come up with the idea of calling the band Pain of Salvation, and thus they would change the name. Now the name itself, as said by Gildan Lowe, has something to do with the meaning of balance, some sort of a slight setback in an otherwise painless journey. And honestly, you can take it in whichever direction you want, but I do believe that it's a very interesting name for a band, especially one that focuses so much on creating conceptual albums and conceptual music. And in 1994, the band, out of their own pockets, would fund their own recording of a first demo, and that demo would be called Here After, and with that demo, they would go on to try to adhere to record companies and get a record label to sign them, and fortunately they succeeded in doing so with Inside Out Music, back then known as Avalon, and together in 1997 they would record their debut album. And their first album would be called Antropia, and Antropia unfortunately didn't really manage to be that much of a breakthrough, so the band would have to persist and go on to record yet another album in 1998 called One Hour by the Concrete Lake. And this album is a very interesting concept album, of course being inspired by Lake Harachai in the USSR, a lake of course which a lot of radioactive waste was thrown into, and thus created basically a very 
uninhabitable place and the concept for this album is overarching it has to do a lot with humans and nature and what we do to the earth and what the earth is doing back to us and government you know, the usual shindig basically. And the slightly altered musical direction of this one and the very strong concept have been very favorable to the band and thus resulting in a slight hit for the band. And while 1999 saw a bit of a break from the band, in the year of 2000 they would regroup and write and record an album together being the perfect element part 1 which is also the album of today's topic. And this album in its essence is a conceptual album that revolves around broken people and the process of which people go through in the growth from childhood to adulthood. Now while this is conceived by many to be the greatest Pain of Salvation album ever, this is where my personal grudge with this one starts, seeing as I honestly really didn't enjoy this one that much. So firstly, when I finally decided to listen to this album, I went ahead, searched it up on Spotify and hit the play button. The first track is called Used, I listened to it, I got the gist, this is progressive metal, and I realized that I was really not in the mood for it and I really didn't want to review an album like this, so I just paused it, went on to do other things and then i came the day afterwards and again i pressed the play button from the start and this time i got through four tracks before i just realized that i wasn't in the mood for it still so i stopped listening to it went on my day and came back to this album the day afterwards now realizing that if i don't listen to it right now i really wouldn't have the time to make this episode so alas i did manage to listen to this entire album but honestly i really didn't enjoy it but this is a message to anyone who does love this band and love this album. I don't think that this is a bad album, I really really don't, I just think that this is an album that is entirely not my taste, not what I like about my music, but I can highly appreciate the fact that it's a good album. Objectively, this one's a 10 out of 10, it's really good, if you like this type of music this is the perfect as it can possibly get. But pretty much subjectively, I think that this one maybe scraps like a 2 or a 3. Yes, I can go on a rant about how much I didn't like this music and what I would change and the stuff that they could have done better and stuff like that, but honestly, that's really not the point. This album is masterfully created, meticulously planned, well-performed, well-executed, and it's just not my thing. But if you're a person that really likes guitar-led albums and you like some deep, interesting vocals as well and is a very unique unique concept and very vivid lyrics, you might really like this one. You know what? I do believe that this one has a lot of similarities to Dream Theater and especially Metropolis Part 2, but despite the two being sort of similar to one another, I just really can't relate to one as well as the other. So while I would love to go ahead and talk to you about each of the songs on here and the way that the concept unfolds and the three chapters and sections that they're on on here and all the magnificent things that this album probably does, I really am not the right person to do so. So if you you like this album or you want to know more about this album I highly recommend anyone to go ahead and check out another review of this one just not mine. I guess I'm saying this a bit too late, but you know, it is what it is. But who knows, maybe a naive Naomi right now just doesn't really get this album, but in time due, maybe the subjectivity and the objectivity that I have for this album will kind of merge together in the middle and I'll get some sort of appreciation that comes from within me. But for now, this album is just not for me and I'm highly understanding of anyone that does love it. And if you love this album or if you hate this album for the same instance, you can write it down in the comments. What do you feel about it. So I kind of just purposefully not talked about this album's concept that much throughout this review because I do believe that it has a lot to do with the actual album cover. So you see, this album follows the story of he and her. Now I really can't say this for sure, but I do see the two children on the cover and I think to myself that these are the two children that this album focuses on. Of course it doesn't really matter what they look like or who they are because they're supposed to be some sort of an archetype of people as a whole. And well, these are two broken people and seemingly to me they live a life that is opposite to their nature and the way that you can see this in the cover is that you have a very bleak city landscape behind them but superimposed on top of it quite transparent you also have some leaves and some nature showing the real nature of human beings. And of course this entire album cover also looks like a photo hidden in a drawer for decades upon decades, basically a relic of nostalgic 
past. And I do get that. I love that idea. Again, it all ties up to a very interesting concept that I just really didn't find favorable because of the music to accompany it. And another tidbit of information, this album actually also has a unique new cover for the 2020 anniversary remix edition of this one. It does feature a lot of similarities to the original, but the two children look well, different. They look more formal in their attire, and I don't really know what it has to do with anything. I do think that it's a nice cover, but all in all, I would state that the first one, the original one, is my definitive favorite. So, this album is the unfortunate victim of averages, and thus I'll have to take my subjectivity and objectivity and put them together in a rating of 5 out of 10. But that's about it, guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for tomorrow because we're going to be listening to Parallel World by Far East family band. I of course want to thank my lovely supporters over on Patreon, so thank you so much to Clay Wan, Rist of Kings, and Lindsay Haycox. You guys are just the best, and if any of you want to support me over on Patreon, you can find the link down in the description or in my about page. But that's about it guys, have a wonderful day and I'll catch you all tomorrow. Bye guys.